building an enormous multi-stage EDF thruster. For many years, I've been fascinated by EDF thrusters, producing surprisingly high thrust for their size, and essentially being an electric version of the jet engine. Although EDFs are rather inefficient compared to propellers, their compact size and high output speed made them a good option for all sorts of thrust vehicles, as long as enough power can be provided. When researching the propulsion systems of electric aircraft, I found that one method to boost efficiency is using two sets of contra-rotating blades. This cancels out the thrust losses from swirling output air, and more than doubles the thrust output compared to a single set of blades. Not only can this slightly reduce power requirements, but it can give an already compact thruster even more thrust for its same overall footprint. To test out this idea, I needed to find an ideal size and blade geometry that would be easily printable and get the best performance. The larger I can make the thruster, the better the overall efficiency will be, but being larger also adds extra cost, complexity, and weight. A good compromise seemed to be a rotor diameter of 300 millimeters, which is conveniently the largest diameter I can print as one piece on my CR10 3D printer. This will also allow for a thrust and efficiency comparison to the jet scooter thrusters, which are also 300 millimeters. Moving on to blade geometry, I developed many blade profiles for various projects, but needed to find a way to compare them and approximate how their performance would scale. So I printed out five different designs with a diameter of 90 millimeters and gathered all the performance data to characterize each blade profile. Some designs were from past creations like Green Lightning or the Jet Scooter, and others were entirely new experimental profiles. So I tested each different profile on a thrust scale with a power meter and a tachometer so I could determine the blade constants and adjust variables such as pitch and blade count to best fit the motors I already had. Using the data I gathered, I was able to use some thrust calculators to predict how this performance would scale and how many blades would be needed for the motors I planned to use. Unfortunately, the most efficient blade design at small scale turned out to not be a good fit for my motors, requiring 24 blades to utilize all the motor's power. I found that this many blades would take significant blade losses and have a much worse overall efficiency. Surprisingly, the best performing design was Green Lightning's blade profile. Needing only 8 blades and being the second most efficient at small scale, this design was the best fit of all the tested profiles. I also estimated the full scale thrust to be around 140 newtons, which is enough to be useful in a number of applications. I used 8 blades for the first stage and 9 for the second stage to cancel out the excessive blade on blade noise, which is a key drawback to contra-rotation. I started designing the full scale thruster, and after several hours, I had a mostly finished model. I divided it into printable sections which would be epoxy together later. Using a combination of PETG and carbon fiber nylon, it took a little over a week of non-stop printing and just over three rolls of filament. The only part that really requires a high temp material like CF nylon is the motor mounts because the motors will tend to get warm and soften other printed materials. Once everything was printed, I glued together the components of the top and bottom cowling halves and filled any obvious gaps with filler putty. This was then sanded smooth and given a couple coats of paint for a smooth finish. I used two electric longboard motors with a speed of 170 kV and a rating of 70 amps each. On a 14 cell battery, this amounts to a total of 3,600 watts of maximum power per motor, or 7.2 kilowatts in total. When I started assembly, I made sure to run the motor and fan wires through the internal wire passages before the motors were bolted into place. Each motor is bolted on with four M4 by 16 millimeter machine screws, and each rotor is attached on top of the motor with four more of these screws. A 75 millimeter long, 8 millimeter diameter shaft of skateboard bearings can be inserted between the two rotors to stabilize the motors and ensure that the rotors rotate coaxially. Using thread forming screws, I attach the front and rear motor mounts to the bottom shroud half. Installing a cooling fan in the tail cone ended up being very necessary because I would eventually be pushing my motors to the limit and exceeding the 7.2 kilowatt rating at full thrust. Finishing up the assembly, I used several thread forming screws to securely attach the top half of the shroud. Using zip ties, I secured the cables and mounted the thruster securely to its thrust track. The thruster is now ready for its first test.
The maximum thrust came within just 3 newtons of the prediction when running on a 14 cell battery. With 137.7 newtons, this outperformed the twin engine jet scooter by about 6%. This is a small but significant improvement, especially considering that it takes up only half the intake area. Now examining efficiency, can this thruster make enough thrust to offset its power draw? To calculate its power, I can use the single motor current and voltage readings and roughly multiply it by 2, assuming the difference in blades is cancelled out by the pitch reduction of the second stage. Ideally, I would use a larger current clamp, but this one already reaches its maximum, so there may be a few percent error by measuring one at a time. With this method, I calculated the total power draw to be around 7.8 kilowatts, which is only slightly overrunning the motors. Comparing this to the 6.9 kilowatts of the jet scooter, it is apparent that the extra thrust of this engine comes at a cost in terms of power. Using watts per newton efficiency, the jet scooter thrusters come in at 53.1 watts per newton, and the contra rotating thruster uses 56.9 watts per newton. This is 7.2% less efficient, but its advantages may still make it better suited for thrust vehicles and aircraft. Its high thrust density may reduce drag on the surrounding components, and it is much more convenient to strap on the back of anything with wheels and rock it on down the road. Considering the power levels involved, I recommend that anyone who attempts to build this to exercise extreme caution. I had to use most of my battery collection to power this beast of a thruster. Although I have run simulations and full speed tests, the greatest hazard is one or both rotors exploding and sending flying debris. Never stand directly to the side while operating and always wear safety goggles. Make sure all spinning parts are balanced to the best of your ability to avoid any excess vibration. For prospective builders, 3D model files are available for free through a link in the description. This has been a fun project to work on between all of my engineering classes and other failed thruster attempts. I plan to continue optimizing this design for better efficiency, motor loading, and thermal endurance. Hopefully this thruster design can prove useful and be a step closer toward electric aviation.